Backgammon is a very addictive game. It's like the game of life. One minute you can be up, one roll later you're down again, and it's uh, very large swings. I don't have enough patience to play, to play poker. I like when action is happening all the time. That's what backgammon excites me. It's a more interesting game than in poker because many things happen on the board. Every game is interesting and uh, itself. And in poker, there are only normal hands. The psychological uh, element in backgammon is very important. It's all tactics. But there are lots of elements. It's a, a factor of having a combination of uh, many factors. It's all put in place just to distract people. Able to command the situation over the board. There are certain groups of people that will be, they will have their friends um, and supporters crowded around them. Um, which is very, very intimidating for the opponent. And women will do the same thing. And we might start filing our nails or start talking to the person sitting next to us or wave across the room at somebody or um, lean forward provocatively. At the end of the day, it is distraction tactics. The early rounds are played out against intense pressure and the world's best players know that their calculations have to be precise in order to avoid catastrophe against a weaker opponent. New York street player Falafel squeezed through to round three after eight hours of play. Sometimes it's a game of a, like what I call like a cat and mouse game. I know I'm going to trap you know, my opponent, but I just, you know, I just have to wait and get him into a situation where I'm most comfortable in. And when that happens, Usually this is when I win. With so many hopefuls here from all over the globe, it's inevitable that some of the big guns of backgammon are going to be going up against relatively unknown entities. For example, the best of British Dodd Davis is going up against fellow Brit Andy Plater. He's the True Money Games online qualifier and he came into the tournament with a very low error rate of 4.34. But no matter how easy or how difficult you think your draw is, anything can still happen because this is backgammon. If I play a weaker player in a tournament, I adapt to my game quite a lot, um, sometimes probably too much. You can't give them as many chances to get lucky, basically. You should just be able to beat them, but backgammon isn't like that. It's got dice involved, so you can only minimise their chances. So what I try to do against a weaker player in the tournament is make the game as complicated as possible. Whether it's the right play or not, I'd rather... I figure if I make the game complicated, they'll make bigger mistakes than I will. But British hopes seem to be crushed when leading lights Dodd Davis and John Slattery fell at the first hurdle. Come in and hit. Okay. It could be right. Make it, making it hard from the cover once yeah. you do for us to. Oh, she oh. Oh. It Great was shot. left to unsung hero Mike Hurd who carved his way through to the last 16 to face chess master Shimon Kagan. In and out. Now, out is better, but. Okay. Now, this is an interesting thing. Normally, this would not be a double. Mm -hmm. But at the score, I think it comes. A good double at the score. And now Kagan should really think, I think this is a take, despite the score. Mm -hmm. but I think it's a, I mean, for money, this is a trivial take. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And at the score, I believe it's a take. I agree. But we'll see. I agree. But at least uh, they're taking his time. And I think uh, what, Hurd gave a good double. What he here. does know is he can pass this uh, to an even match score. He can pass this and be even, or he can take it. He doesn't have to get gambling with these men on the three point. Mm -hmm. And he has an excellent chance to win the game and win the match. So the right decision is to take it. I don't know the hand just did. And he takes it. Okay. So here, this could be the last game. Kagan trying to win this game for the match. I do feel that uh, when the score lines are very, very close together, I do feel a strong edge that I'm going to win rather than the other guy. And now he's going to get uh, punished for not yeah, coming yeah, out, but anyway. Uh, and now you see, not only is Red a huge favourite, but White has gotten himself in a potentially in a position where he could get He's been hit again. Oh no, he's no, going no. for the prime. He could have hit another man. Great play, I think. Um, Pure play. I think that was a good play. Yeah. I mean, I would have thought more about it, but uh, it was a good play because Mike, this is Mike exactly very the guy, fluently here. Because this is exactly what uh, White doesn't want. And he, he did this to himself. He started out making the two point, making the points in the wrong order, blitzing where he couldn't get credit for the yeah, gamut. Six point. And now it's almost impossible for him to win the game, and he's going to have to fight like a dog to save the gammon here. And uh, it's very likely that uh, 
his misunderstanding of this position is going to cost him the whole match because if he gets gammoned, he really only has himself to blame. When he took the double, I approved of taking because if he played it right, there was not much of a chance of being gammoned, a good chance to win. Instead, he decided against everything that's score dictated to go for a ridiculous blitz without yeah. enough material, making the points in the wrong order. And his position is deteriorating. Crumbling. Crumbling. Well, he has two dead checkers already. Every dead and he's checker. hit another checker. He's hit another checker if he wants it. And he does want he it. He should here. want it, yeah. I think he wants it here. Oh, yeah. That's See, he's five. not so much worried about losing the game now. It's going to be hard to lose the game with Wyatt having all yeah, his yeah. dead checkers. He definitely wants it. I promise you he wants it. I know this position. Come on, Mike. Kagan sparred with Bobby Fischer over the chessboard in the 1960s, but Mike's strong technique and belief earned him a last eight spot against America's John O'Hagan. In the future, I 